Underrated Movies. I'm your guy. I am your critic. Well, I don't know if I say critic, but the guy that recommends movies that don't get talked about a lot. Mr. Alton Henry. And today I would like to talk to you of another film that I think is extremely underrated. And, well, <clears throat> I'm just giving my overall thoughts about this film. I'm not going to deep dive into the history or everything about about the film, the character, maybe a little bit about the film, but just with character. I'm not going to get into character. I'm not going to get into the origins of anything about it. I'm just going to tell you what my thoughts about this film was and what I really enjoyed it and what I think it's done different compared to other films of its, I guess, universe. And, um, the film came out recently, and it's actually the first film I've seen of this filmmaker's work, which I would like to watch more of her films. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about The Internals. Uh, Chloe Zhao's Marvel debut as directing the film Internals. Starring Gemma Chan. Um, what's that guy from, from The Bodyguard? Shoot. Madsen, uh, Richard Madsen, Barry Keegan, and uh, Brian T. Henry. It's about a group of powerful beings known as the Eternals that they were created by the Celestials, I think, and they and they are on Earth to protect. It's resources, it's planets, it's uh, the resources there while trying to trying to fight against these creatures known as the Deviants. However, their existence, they, the rest of the, of the internals don't know what their true existence are until, until it's revealed, until there's a little twist to it and towards the end. But soon, while on the planet, the Internals, starring Gemma Chan, Richard Madison, Brian T. Henry, and Barry Keegan, and the story revolves around a mystical beings known as the Internals are brought to Earth. Actually, has been living on Earth for centuries, going around fighting deviants through planet to planet and have lived life over seven almost seven or or almost several centuries to express their love and new love profound love for the human race only to find out that the beings that has tormented since the dawn of time the deviants have come back and the Eternals must band together to find the source of who has brought these deviants back on Earth. Wow. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and say it. This is one of the best superhero films I've seen. It's different. This is a different film. This is a different film that I've seen out of any other Marvel film that has come out and just for superheroes. Um, now this is the first film I've seen of Chloe Zhao, and with this film, it makes me kind of want to go back and watch her other films, No Man's Man, The Writer, and anything she produces, or she, she, she decides to direct. I really don't get all the hate, though I'm seeing some of the reasons why people had criticism with this movie. It's slow, it's whatever, it's... This movie reminds me of old school blockbuster cinema where it cares about character storytelling and not really just on visuals, visual spec, uh, just, you know, specter, spectacular, whatever. It's focused on building a world, building a story, and really tr trying to tell it. The film took its time, and that's what I really loved about this film. 
it took its time. It took its time to flesh out the characters. It took its time to flesh out a story, and 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 and, and the and the reason and and the visual effects were cool. The film took its time. The movie's two and a half hours. It didn't feel like it need to rush anything to get where it had to get to. And the movie subverted what I thought could, was going to happen based on what the trailer was selling me. It was something completely different. And I loved it. This was really cool. Yeah, I mean, these internals are like gods like weapons. They, uh,. There's really not much to latch on, but you do latch on their love. They're fascin they're, they're, they become fascinated with human life. And the longer they, that they've stayed there to look after these humans, to try to teach them, uh, to teach them things, to teach them how to live properly and to spread good and kindness, they've grown attached to them. And you can see later on, you can see that their views have, have, have become different. Some of their views, they, they you know, they not that the, the internals might not always agree with one another. They, you see, you see their relationship change over time, and you understand why. And right there, it 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 focuses on themes like: Can human nature really change? Uh, what does it take? What what do we, what do we have to do as a society to change some of our destructive behavior? Uh, can do we have to do something very drastic and maybe sometimes necessary evil to change certain things or should we you know what's the solution and these and this film really questions what is the solution to prevent violence and war preventing the bad side of our human nature what can we do and the film really really forces that theme throughout the whole film because each character is affected by it how do you cope with human nature how do you how do you deal with it some of these characters which I don't remember every actually I got a list here uh, Icarus Kingo Sprite Sprite um Pass, uh, Pastos, Makari, Drig, G Gamilish, every character has an Athena, a Jack. <laughs> every character has attached themselves to the planet one way or another in their own way, and you can see just how attached they are um and the action sequences with this film i enjoyed them you see the freaking scenes that are happening it's like it's like it's like wide shots throughout the whole sequence uh when when these sequence when, when they when the action hits you could see what's happening you could see what's literally happening in the action scenes that's rare. It does remind me of the Revenant a little bit because that's kind of how they shot the film a bit, like like kind of similar like the Revenant. Zoe Cloud mentions that a big influence from the film from the Revenant uh, from the Eternals was from the Revenant, and um, it shows a little bit just how the camera moves, pans around. Sometimes it does a little of a one take stance where it moves around, but not sh but in a sense it's shaky. But it's like tracking certain shots of the action. And some of the it's, it has some of the best action, well shot sequences from any other Marvel movie. From any other Marvel movie, it's a beautiful looking. This this is one of the be most beautiful looking Marvel films. I mean, it may not be as colorful because some of the lighting, some of the grading, feels a little bit gray and I guess dead. But it's well beautifully shot and I, I, I you know I can't I, I don't I don't you know I, I can't argue it may not be like the it's the it's the most well shot action sequence from any MCU film that I've seen just just period 
Just period. Uh, and I also like some of the twists that comes along in the film. I'm not really going to spoil much about it, but... It's more along the lines of the Internals. One of the members of the Internals is not a good guy. And the reason behind it, you see there, like, it goes back to their opinions on what, should they stick to their mission? Should they not? It's, it's, it's very complex. And I like that complexity that this film brings out, out of this, out of this, um, out of this film. And you understand why that some of these characters turn on each other. You understand why some of these characters believe the way that they be that they believe, and it's and it's powerful. It's powerful. This is a powerful Marvel film. This is a really good film. This is. I'm glad that the film didn't rush anything. I'm glad it didn't try to cram certain materials to just to get you to get you to to be entertained and i also like that explained of reason why thanos had to do what he had to do or you felt he had to do that thing where he did the snap it also explains why or it gives more of a the bigger picture why that he had to had to do that and it sets up a bigger bigger threat than thanos I can see that this this kind of film might be divisive, might be, you know, maybe not for everyone, but this is for me, and I encourage everybody else to go watch this film, available on Disney+. Plus. I regret not seeing it in theaters. Man, I regret not seeing this in because it's... When... When those creatures, when them big old giant statues, man, I forgot, was it Galactus or something? No, it ain't Galactus. Um, what are they? The, the Celestials. When they show up on the screen, they're fucking huge. You feel that enormous, like, how big they are. Even, I, I watched it on Disney+. Plus. I even felt that watching on Disney Plus. Just imagine the feeling seeing it on the big screen. Man. This is probably the most underrated film that came out last year. And I wish I saw this in theaters. I like I really don't understand the hate. It just tells me that audience nowadays don't have long attention spans now they do now they just want something like, like that just to get you invested i mean yeah the internals is not a well-known property shout out to comic explain because I, I like watching your stuff dude and your other channel come up like what is it yeah i know you got two channels or something um guys check this out this didn't get the love it, it deserved um this is the one of the best MCU movies. It actually might be one of my favorite superhero films. Maybe my top ten. Um, I love that complexity. It reminds me a little bit of Watchmen, which I will talk about that eventually. Um, check this movie out on Disney+. Plus. Please comment below. Let me know if you've seen it, if you have seen it. Tell me what you liked about it. This film is extremely underrated. What the hell? I just don't get the criticism, guys. I mean, I mean, okay, I get it, but it's it's like this is an attempt for Marvel to do something different, and I believe it works. Um, comment below. Let me know what is your favorite underrated movie.